Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. If you're not into sad stories, you might want to skip this episode, but... I've had this guitar for about two and a half years, and I can't believe I'm actually saying goodbye to it today. It's one that I always thought, you know, I priced it, you know, high enough that most people wouldn't buy it, but a few people have been flirting with it, and somebody finally pulled the trigger. I'm not happy about it. I'm actually a little bit sad, but today we say goodbye to the Steve Howe V Les Paul. So if you're a longtime follower of this channel, you'll probably remember the video when I posted something that said, I'm buying a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame guitar player's guitar. That was in October of 2017. I mean, that particular video only got a little under a thousand views, which was good at that time. And the review and demo of this guitar did not do that well. But the one we say goodbye to today is this one. That's right. I own Steve Howe's The Les Paul. So I thought I would just give this one a completely dedicated upload and retell the tale of this because most people have not heard it. So this is a guitar that Steve Howe toured the world with. But there's actually a few good stories behind this even within myself after Steve Howe sold it. So the story behind this one is Steve sold it in the early 2000s. I guess record sales were not doing too well at that point in time. So he sold it to one of his rich friends who actually lived in Michigan. And that is the guy that I purchased this one from. It was initially listed on Reverb for $40,000. I mean, that is just an absolutely insane price, right? And while, yes, this is an absolutely beautiful guitar that I'll teach you about in a separate review and demo, that's right, I did go ahead and re-record this episode. That way, this would be properly documented before I sent it on to its new home. But when I saw this, I fell in love with it, not because it was Steve Howe's, it was mainly because it was a wine red The Les Paul. At that point in time, I had a couple of natural ones, so I was really looking for a red one, and the fact that it had a famous user before it that owned it, it was just all icing on the cake for me. So I reached out to the guy, and at that point in time, I couldn't afford $40,000. So I asked him if he would be interested in letting me document this guitar to help him sell it. E even at that time, my YouTube channel, I, I think I was around like 5,000 subscribers. It was nothing crazy. So the guy just kind of brushed me off in a polite way. Like he was interested at first, but nothing ever ended up transpiring. But after about a month or so, I contacted him again thinking, well, maybe I could just make him an offer. Clearly, I could not pay $40,000 for it. But I let him know what I purchased other ones for and what I've sold those for and what I would be willing to offer. So I let him sit with that and after about another month he finally came back and said all right man when do you want to meet up? So from there you know my heart was racing it was pounding I was going to own a rock and roll hall of fame guy's guitar and it just happens to be you know a model that I've always wanted because it's ridiculously rare and super beautiful. It was like a banking holiday the next day so we had to wait for another day after that to pull out the money from the bank and then I drove up to Michigan to a spot called Potter Park Zoo. That zoo was not the best zoo in the world, but that's a very special day to me because we only had one kid at that time and she was just a tiny little baby. And you know, now you can see her with this guitar. She's grown up so much. And I think that's part of the reason why, you know, I have a affinity for this guitar because you know, my kids have like grown up knowing that this guitar is in my house. But we spent the day at that zoo. We kind of showed her around while we were waiting for this guy to show up because we had about two hours left. I purposefully planned that. That way the family would have something to do while we drove up there as well. But I will never forget when this guy pulled up because you know, it's around the time he's supposed to be showing up. I didn't see anybody. You actually had to pay to even park at that zoo. I think it was like seven bucks. And then I saw a Porsche driving my way and it's like, <laughs> yep, that, that must be the guy that has the Steve Howe the Les Paul. Now, if I was dropping this off to someone, I'd be pulling up in a, a luxury minivan. <laughs> not, not quite the same story for them if that was the case. But he pulled up, he had, you know, the stereotypical trophy wife. He was the cool dude guy, had all the money. He showed me the guitar, you know, we talked for a little bit, we shook hands and we closed the deal. He was, he was just pretty much an investment type of guy. He had this for investment purposes only and he had something else that he wanted to move on. That's why he took my offer for it. 
So he was happy with the sale, I was happy with the sale, and I took it home, I documented it to the best of my abilities at that point in time. But now the untold story of this guitar. I almost got on Pawn Stars with this guitar because I just thought, you know, it'd be funny to be on TV. This is a famous guitar. It would have got them a lot of views because they had like that Mary Ford episode going on. I made it to like the final casting round with these guys on this guitar. But that was the season everybody didn't know if it was actually going to exist or not because the old man has passed on, but they decided to keep going. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, something happened and they did not want this guitar at the end because I just couldn't actually get in contact with the person that was their agency representing them. And I tried to reach out to him again about a year later because I know this would be great content for him, but maybe they didn't want it because I was already a YouTuber and it would kind of poke a hole in their story of just some random Joe Schmo. Hey, here's Steve House the Les Paul that I'm just wanted to pawn here. <laughs> they probably could have put this in an auction and got like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 because the provenance is all there. But my favorite thing about owning this guitar just has to be the shock factor. Whenever somebody would come and visit me, like they drove a long way to purchase a guitar, or like when Robert Baker came over, this is the one I would like to surprise people with and just hand it to them. It's like, dude, you, you gotta play this guitar because everybody's face always lights up when they hold this piece of history. And that's why I really enjoyed owning this piece because it, it's a great conversation piece, I guess you could say. But since it's already been played and toured around the world, you don't have to be scared to hand it to someone else and let them play it. That's kind of why my whole YouTube channel started because I'm not the best guitar player. I enjoy playing when I do get to play, but I just like sharing them with everyone. I would love to start a museum one day and the way that the channel keeps growing, the more I see this becoming a reality in the future. I mean, yeah, it's gonna really stink that I have to track down some of these really nice examples again, but I'll have like this museum that has like the ones that you don't touch. They're behind glass. They're just meant to look at because they're great but I want to have like a small playing segment where I also have like beater player grade versions of the exact same guitars. I think it'd be more of like a private museum, like you have to schedule your own tour of it, not necessarily, you know, thousands of people come in every day, but I think that'd be fun. So I do have to ship this guitar off today. So how exactly do you ship a $30,000 guitar? let alone internationally. Let me tell you, it's not cheap and it takes a lot of paperwork. But let's go ahead and uh, show you how I would pack this guitar. Essentially, first things first, you need to secure it like in this motion. So you don't want any of that happening. And you will also want to detune your instrument a little bit. Not all the way, just enough to relieve pressure. So if it does get smacked, it doesn't have all that pressure acting against it to break it even further. See, that's good. It doesn't have to be completely slacked. And now we need to add some bubble wrap. Now, some people will say, do not use bubble wrap on guitars. And I will agree with them to a point that not all bubble wrap is created equally. There's some cheap, nasty bubble wrap out there that will hurt your guitar. But I ordered this stuff from 4bubble.com. It's just my local place. I'm not sponsored to say any of this stuff, but I have found that this stuff is safe for guitar finishes. So if you ever feel a, a bubble wrap that has like a matte feel to it, don't use that kind. That's the kind that's gonna eat up your finish. You want it to kind of be a glossy feel. And if you've never <laughs> had bubble wrap in your life, you're probably like, what is this guy talking about? Matte and gloss on bubble wrap? But basically I just secure the fit because these artist series cases are pretty garbage as far as that goes. Also very important is to remove your switch tip, especially when they're irreplaceable like this one. And we'll put some contact information in here. Wrap that guy up like so. So this is going to ensure that this guitar is perfectly safe. So here we go, remember before it was sliding back and forth and now it's completely immobilized. It'll move a little bit, but not a lot. It's got all that pressure there. 
Now you don't actually want anything around the headstock. I disagree with a lot of people that say, oh, pat it all in there. Because what happens is if you have stuff there, it's now in direct contact with the edge of the case. If it gets dinged, you're gonna lose your headstock. So you just want support to keep that off the floor. And then this is optional, but very well recommended that you put something in between the frets because sometimes, you know, the case will actually push the strings against the frets and can cause some premature divoting. And if it gets like hit really hard, sometimes you get like a slit in the fret that will catch and you'll have to level recrown after that. And then I like to put bubble wrap over top of that. That way they don't move, accidentally scratch the guitar, things like that. Well, it's been good owning you, man. We'll see you on the other side. I, I can pretty much guarantee this is going to be the last time I ever see this guitar. So now we need to pack it like, like the guitar it is, essentially. So I think what I want to do for this one is I want to use one of those Stumac things. I'm going to like double, triple box the thing. Stumac shipping system might seem expensive on the outside, but honestly, when you, when you do the math, it, it does make sense if you're not comfortable shipping guitars. I'm comfortable shipping them. I just want to make sure that I'm using the absolute best of the best for this one. I'm actually even gonna do a little bit extra. I've been saving this big double walled box, especially for this occasion. So this is goodbye. I did my absolute best packing job I can possibly do. Triple boxed it, it weighs 30 pounds, 51 by 21 by 12, it's a nice big package here. It's got arrows to help them if they want to listen, otherwise it's mainly just for the guy who's getting the guitar so he knows which way to open it. Take care my friend, I will miss you. Oh God. That moment when you forget to put the book in. This happens every single time. Maybe I can just slide it in like this. Or maybe even like this. Perfect. And we've got one more to say goodbye to now. I mean, this thing is just gonna <laughs> feel like a walk in the park. It's that Epiphone Les Paul Modern. Yeah, this thing sold really fast. Like, I thought maybe I could do a quick review on it. Don't worry, I'm gonna buy a black one, but it'll probably be a while until they're available. But honestly, it'd probably be a while till I had the time to make a video about this guitar too. So I think that's just gonna be the route I take on some of these Epiphones now. Or I might just have to sell the ones I bought. That way I can focus on what I do have and just buy the models when I when I have time to review them. Because lately I've just been a little bit overwhelmed. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. I'm gonna miss this guitar, but since I sold a high-end guitar, that means I have to buy another high-end guitar. So we're gonna have a fun unboxing in about a day or two. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.